Okay, I guess we're all ready here today. So welcome on behalf of our city and our city council. Welcome to our meeting tonight. Um, it's our consolidated agenda and um, I'm gonna call the meeting to order. And I will have a roll call by our city clerk. The record will reflect that all members are present. Um, our agenda eyes youth pastor couldn't be here tonight. They couldn't attend. And so thankfully, Kevin Ham has agreed to provide our invocation and our pledge. So Kevin. Thank Everybody you, Mayor. Please rise. Who starts the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Remain standing, please, for the invocation. Will you join me now in prayer? Dear wise and loving God, first let me say thank you on behalf of all who are gathered here tonight. Thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for our health that we need to fulfill our calling. Thank you for our friendships that nourish our soul. Thank you for our ability to be involved in useful work and for the honor of bearing responsibilities that suit us. Thank you for loving us with your boundless and gracious nature. I ask you to bless our mayor, council, and all other he others here tonight as they deliberate the items before them. Please guide them to know what pleases you and what would benefit those who live and work in our beloved city. Amen. Thank you. Um, I'll have approval of the agenda by our city manager. Thank you, Mayor. There are no additions or deletions to the agenda. Okay. Um, actually, we had our closed session and we discussed and instructed our negotiators. Um, we had a subcommittee that um, after the closed session, um, we met with Mr. Johnson and subject to the approval on D2 at the end of the agenda, our um, we'll talk about that then. Our copies will be available later in the meeting, um, just before D1. So um, with that, I'll go to presentations, and we're gonna have an update by Jesse Almanza of the San Diego Workforce Partnership on the One Stop Career Centers. Good afternoon, Mayor, City Council members. My name is Jesse Almanza. I am the site supervisor for the North County Coastal Career Center out of Oceanside, and uh, the information that I have to provide basically is in regards to the partnership with the City of Vista and the work that we do in assisting the job seekers throughout the North County area. I would just like to say that, uh, first of all, uh, we uh, have a very good working relationship with the city. Uh, we do have a, a um, satellite site in the City of Vista located at the Vista Town site location on Vista Village Drive. Uh, we provide job seekers for the opportunity to uh, seek for employment. As we all know, the economy is not uh, well off right now and everybody is looking to uh, cover as much as they can and do as best as they can to get themselves situated um, back into the workforce. Uh, we provide assistance in resume writing, obviously interviewing skills uh, for the public that has not done that in a while, of course. Uh, we also provide services for individuals who are having a difficulty time in finding employment. And we work, of course, with an array of, of, of a humongous amount of uh, employers that are out there right now. Uh, contrary to the economy's situation, there, there are still jobs out there that we are constantly going after and seeking to assist these job seekers with. Uh, we have programs such as uh, on-the-job training, which will provide the employer is the opportunity to hire an individual out there in the state of California, which we're in partnership with Employment Development Department. will provide 50% of that wage. Um, information for that type of program can be available or is available with the North County Career Centers or any one stop throughout the region. Uh, we also provide them with uh, avenues of them uh, interviewing with employers when they want to come down to our centers. We uh, maintain their uh, recruitment uh, locations for them, for people to come in and, and speak to employers. Uh, we also have um, what, what we call uh, support services, or should I say community referral services, uh, if individuals are not just looking for employment, but other things are going on with them. 
we're able to provide them an array of resources that are available out there in the general community, uh, utilizing um, our services with the Vista Community Clinic, North County Lifeline, North County Interface Services, any other service where we uh, are not able to assist because of course we focus in on job, um, job, job services. Uh, we had the opportunity yesterday to, um, to get hosted by the City of Vista to conduct a, a job fair here in your facility, which by the way is, 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 is tremendous, is very nice. Uh, a lot of individuals that had never been here have now feast their eyeballs on it and know that it's a great place to be at. Uh, very successful. We had about 650 people that we accounted for, but we did have stragglers coming in through all kinds of doors that are available. So. Uh, we had 35 employers that were in attendance, uh, all of which had employment opportunities for the job seekers. Uh, they had the opportunity to go in there and provide their resumes. They had the opportunity to talk to the employers. We had an individual sitting there uh, looking at individual's resumes to see whether or not it was something that they may, they, they may be able to work with as they worked their way through the tables and, and talked to the existing employers. Uh, we had the support, of course, of the city for assisting us in setting everything up for the job seekers, uh, well advertised. Um, we, we thought at the beginning that the weather was gonna be a vital thing for us, but you know, it, it shined all the way through the day, so we had a successful time. Uh, the good or the better news, I should say, is that these type of activities are never gone unspoken for because we are already getting reports from employers that were there yesterday that are actually considering, have offered positions, and will continue to offer positions to individuals, we had a company uh, here in Vista, um, I believe it's AccuTech, uh, that's, that's located here in Vista that has offered two positions for someone and considering two others. We had a company, uh, I was not able to get the name of them, that they're, they're looking up to, to hire for up to seven people. So overall, uh, those are just the few that I was able to catch wind on, on my way up here. But overall, I would really like to thank each and every one of you and the City of Vista, of course, for helping us and hosting us, and also for understanding that we are here to do a, a job in the service for the general public. Uh, we realize that we're in very critical times right now, uh, and contrary to what I, uh, a lot of people believe, uh, there are employers out there that are willing to hire people. The competition is king for everyone out there, and that's why we struggle and we work with people to try to get them back, back into the workforce by making sure that they take advantage of the services that we have available there for them. Um, so with that, I believe that's the report that I have to, to give, if anyone has any questions. Does anyone have any questions? John, Mayor Pro Tem? Yeah, I'd just like to thank you for your efforts out there. I think I ran into you twice this month uh, promoting Amazing. what you do, yeah. Correct. So uh, just would like to recognize that you're out there working hard yourself trying to help people get employed and uh, appreciate your service. Well, we appreciate your service also. Anybody else? Thank you, Mr. Elmer. Well, we appreciate you, you coming. Have a great evening. The next thing on, our, thing on our agenda is the consent calendar, and these are things that will be enacted with one motion unless an item is moved from the calendar. And so um, we have C1 through C11 are on our consent calendar, and I have to the two pulled C6 and C9 are pulled. Is, are there any other items that someone would like to pull? C6 and C9 C5, been pulled please. by the public. And C5, okay, C. Anything else, anyone? Okay, then I would entertain a motion for the balance. I'll go ahead and make a motion for the remainder of the consent calendar. A second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. <coughs> please vote. Okay, that motion passes unanimously. So then the next item we will go to is uh, C5, which is the ambulance purchase. And that was pulled by Steve. So do you want a report? Would you like a report, Steve? Sure. Council Member Grassi? Does it need a report? <laughs> you have questions? Yeah, I do have a question. And it goes to uh, back to uh, the, um, the pro process that we had for consolidation. I knew we had a study out there. How's that study coming, or where are we in the process of that? I don't think he's on. Are you on? I don't on? think you're on there. No. Not really. The green, the green light there is on. There you ah. go. There you go. Thank you. 
Uh, good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. Rick Minnick, Deputy Chief. Uh, seated to my right is Jeff Hahn, Battalion Chief. Uh, and I'm in place of Chief Fisher, who is unable to attend this evening. Uh, in response to your question on the consolidation, is that? I thought CityGate or something was going to be doing some type of uh, study about possible consolidation, and I don't know where we're at with that. We, we are in the middle of that, those conversations. Um, the city managers and the chiefs are, are in, in um, conversations with them as far as the scope of work. Uh, we've had um, three meetings, and we will be continuing to to meet to see what the scope is. is and we're still um, we started out with four agencies, and we're down to three, and we still are having those discussions, even though there are some um, other agencies that are looking at, at various options. Uh, we're still continuing with um, trying to see if we can have an agreed upon scope of services for CityGate to look at at least the three agencies to consider uh, consider consolidation and phasing in even portions of consolidation. So there were a number of, of items that we all were wanting to look at and um, possibly take you know small steps and then larger steps and to go into it. So we're still working on that scope. You know, when you talk about small steps, when I, I read this, uh, this agenda item, it talks about the city of Carlsbad purchased an ambulance, and I guess we took advantage of that price, which was a Escondido, you know, negotiation, you know, negotiated bid. So I think when you talk about consolidation from the beginning, it's probably just the smaller baby steps where you're working together trying to purchase it, which is a good thing, because I would imagine we got a better price on this uh, vehicle because of that. Absolutely, we okay. did. And that was the hard work of the gentleman seated before you. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I I'll go ahead and make a, a motion on this item then. Okay. Mr. Lopez, Council Member Lopez. Thank you, Mayor Ritter. Uh, we're here with number five to purchase a new ambulance. Can we get by another year without it? Um, we uh, are purchasing this ambulance on a schedule uh, that we have and what we'll be replacing, and actually we're a year out past the date that we had scheduled to replace. So we're a year, a year out already? Already, yeah. Uh -huh. And the, the vehicles that we'll be replacing are 2001 models that uh, we've had in reserve and then they go in and out as they either the ambulances need maintenance or, or repair, um, which is we try to gauge the frequency of that when, when we put the replacement schedule together. So mm -hmm. it's, definitely, uh, it's definitely time for the, the one that we're replacing. Uh, the reason I ask is that now I know we've been talking about the consolidation and uh, if we could wait a little bit longer instead of spending the, that kind of money now, could we wait and when we do the consolidation, we could actually buy vehicles a lot cheaper or do we need it now? Okay, Councilman, one of the things is that when we, what we're looking at and calling um, our, just trying to define the scope of, of a study, just to take the first steps into looking at consolidation. And um, if you were to look at a full consolidation where you would be having the savings on these types of vehicles and, or it might have some savings that um, uh, you're talking several years out. However, um, even if we were in a consolidation, our call load is such that we would be on a schedule to replace this even if we were in a consolidated, uh, in, had consolidated with other agencies. When you're running 10,000 calls plus a year, um, our ambulances are getting a lot of miles on them and those are, those are stop and go short term. It's not like long, long uh, trip miles. <laughs> they're, they're stop and go and they're going fit really fast and um, the wear and tear on them is pretty significant. So these are, uh, we extend the life as much as we can. We rotate them around from the busy state, busiest stations to the not as quite as busy stations and extend the life as long as we can. But the, we've extended them out beyond what we feel is maximum. And one of them was in the shop quite a bit last year. We don't, we want to make sure we do not have ambulances breaking down with people in the back of them <laughs> and they're rushing to the hospital. So. We really need to do this. It, it seems like that we have very good vehicles out there, and, and uh, uh, looking at the next year's budget, that uh, we don't, we really don't know what's going to happen next year. And then, 
each week we you know we have a council meeting and we come up with with a different thing that, that we need now <coughs> down the road here we have another thing uh, another item where you know we're going to be spending money uh, when you add a couple of these things together or cut back on some of these next year when we're trying to figure out what our budget is we need to look back at the money that we're spending today sometimes we can get by you know some, the same thing like at home you know, there's sometimes you can't <coughs> buy that new car or that new whatever. You gotta wait until you actually have the money. And yeah, we have the money right here, right now. That, but we need to start saving today. Continue to save today because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, especially next year, with the economy the way it is. Uh, uh, I just, I just feel that we, sh we as a council, need to look at all the spending. You've been very frugal about spending. I, I don't argue that point but we still need to look at this where are we going to continue to be spending money every week on these items and come next January February when we start happy having our 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 uh, workshops are we going to be able to handle it or are we going to have to go out in the public and ask kids to pay thirty dollars play on our fields you know yes it's important ambulances for the lives of people but do we really need to buy them buy it today and maybe we can wait another year before we spend that money well we Thank have extended you. it as long as we can we've extended it beyond what we felt that was reasonable to, and uh, safety factors are now involved we need to make sure that we don't have safety issues and we have reduced our rolling stock overall in the city by about 30 percent so our rolling stock is, is significantly less than what it was um, three years ago, and we keep ratcheting it down, and we are only bringing items to council that were, were already approved in the budget, and we after that's after we've extended their life many times over. And in the next council meeting, you will see a very large expenditure item for an aerial ladder truck. And so um, we will have that before council and, and, and the justification of why it is essential. One, one more thing. We had approved Prop L as a as a half cent increase so we could build buildings and do what we need. But we didn't know that the economy was going to turn the way it did. And so we have difficult times. So this is the same principle, same thing. How are we going to be next year is, is what I'm thinking about now. And uh, But if you want to go ahead and and uh, pass that's that's up to you but it's just I think it's we really still need to cut back on a lot of these things because it's just I just worry about next year thank you and in my mind public safety is number one and I that's sure would want an ambulance breaking down with anybody in the back of it on the way or um, any other emergency so on the way to an emergency so I'm, I'm supporting this so I, but I somebody want to second Very that the motion yeah, I just have one quick question. This is part of our budget, right? It's, a, it's already budgeted? Yes, it is. We have a very extensive process that we go through regarding all of our vehicles and how we select those that need replacement. We extend them if we can, even by six months, and, any, or, and many times it's a year and two years, but it was budgeted, we had planned on it, and now we just bring the purchase to council as we do with any of these vehicles. Thank you. I'll second it. Okay. I have a motion. Anybody else have a comment? If not, please um, vote. Motion passes with one nay. The next item on our agenda is um, our amendments to the business um, license ordinance. And that is, um, we have one speaker. Do you want, would the council like a report? Report, lovely. I'd read it. Then um, Chuck Rabel. Good evening, Mayor, Council, Chuck Rabel here, uh, Vista taxpayer and homeowner, also retired, thank you very much. Uh, I've been watching the business license tax for a, a number of years, and uh, the staff report doesn't really get into the history, but the ordinance goes back to 1975, okay? And it's based on 
gross receipts. Now, a year ago or so, we worked things out as to what the city's definition of gross receipts is, okay, which is unlike business, and uh, you exclude the cost of goods sold and the taxes paid, and that's what the city's definition of gross receipts is. Uh, we tried to get word out to <clears throat> people who are most affected that, uh, hey, this is, don't just fill out the form, uh, look at the definition of the, the city's gross receipts. Uh, we asked that the, uh, that the automatic uh, renewal online uh, define much better what the city really means by gross receipts. Uh, anyway, that, uh, to my knowledge, hasn't happened. I do check the website from time to time. And uh, what I'd like to see is a, is a relook completely of the ordinance, uh, come up with a fee-based structure just like uh, most of the neighboring cities do, and uh, uh, make it consistent with Prop 218. And uh, I have no objection to the technical uh, corrections that are being made here, but at some point in time in the future, we need to make uh, Vista more business friendly and set the stage with the business license fee. Right now, it's a tax. Thank you much. Bye. Thank you, Mr. Rabel. Anybody have any comments here? Okay, Mr. Lopez, Councilmember Lopez. Yes, on that, it's it, it's good that. Uh, that staff is able to work on this and able to save money on this, and that's what it's all about, saving money. And uh, that particular one, there's half a million dollars over the period that it will be saving money. So it's, it's a good deal. Did Thank you want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to uh, approve. Okay, thank you. Do I have a second? Second it. Okay. If you're in favor, please vote. Or not every not everyone in favor, everybody vote. <laughs> Motion passes unanimously. Okay, with that, we are going to item C9, which is the refinancing of section 108, no series, 1999-A. Would anyone like a report on that? Okay, then I have a speaker, Chuck Rabel. Uh, Chuck Rabel once again, the, uh, back in 99, in order to complete the uh, Kokorian project, the uh, community block grant money was uh, levered, uh, leveraged, uh, and the, that's the subject of this note, or the uh, refinancing of this note that we're talking about. Uh, Ostensibly, the, the monies were to go to uh, uh, job training, okay? Job creation, job training. Uh, we're talking about $10 million over the years. That's an awful lot to spend for <laughs> retail jobs that uh, would have gotten filled anyway. Uh, but it did complete the project. And um, the only point I want to make is going forward, let's not leverage income streams that are intended for one purpose and used for a completely different purpose. The uh, uh, nonprofits in town suffered and are continuing to suffer because that money's not there, as is some housing programs, I'm sure. But uh, the only good news I can remember since then about capital projects and funding for nonprofits are, are monies that uh, Supervisor Horn granted us, uh, such as the Wi-Fi downtown and, and uh, the improvements at the uh, Historical Society and lots of good things at the Boys and Girls Club. Um, anyway, the, the word is please, don't use recurring funds to pay non-recurring expenses. Thank you. Councilmember Gronke? Yeah. Um, I, I, I think we're on. 
Thank you, Madam um, I want to talk about two things. I've, he brought up something about uh, the supervisor's slush fund, our taxpayer money used for their discretion to buy votes. Um, wonderful, wonderful uh, way, transparent government. Um, the question I have about, about this uh, 500000 that we're going to gain from, from the refinancing of this, where does that money go? Does that go in our general fund? Does that go back towards this uh, grant money, the CGB grant money? What, what, what do we utilize that money for? It saves us uh, money on the interest payments, and then that money would be uh, additional monies that could be used for CDBG uh, ex allowed expenditures. It could not be used for any nonprofit organizations. Any of the money used for this loan um, could could only go in. It could go into housing programs, but it could not be used for any of the nonprofits because the money that we provide to nonprofits in town that's a maximum cap, and we already have that fully um, allocated and funded to the maximum that we're allowed of CDBG monies to go into, uh, go to be expended for those purposes. Okay, so it is dedicated though? It is dedicated, okay. yes. Thank you. Unless there's a question by someone else, I'll go ahead and make a motion on this item. Okay, I'll take your I'm motion and then um, I have Councilmember Lopez wanted no, to I say. No, I was just gonna, I was gonna make a motion to approve okay. it, but uh, I have a motion I'll and a second. second. And then uh, Councilmember Lopez, if yep. you have something you wanted to say. Thank you. Now, over the 10-year period here, you saved over half a million dollars on this. Uh, now, you're saying the only money that that additional that you saved there would only be for housing? Could it uh, be only for housing? CDBG allowed programs. It could be some types of housing, some kind of types of um, infrastructure. There is a list of allowed costs or programs that you, uh, not programs, I'm sorry, allowed Costs that you could uh, put it into, and it usually is um, building of something that to provide some type of housing or rehabilitation or some of those types of programs. Like rock? Uh, not necessarily not this necessarily. is rock. Uh, I'd have to go look back and look at the allowed expenditures, mm -hmm. but uh, it mainly is uh, it, uh, possibly if that's if in the full rehabilitation category, but again, not for social service programs. Okay, thank you. Mayor Bridget Magalera, did you want to say something? I see you're pushing on your microphone. Okay, I have a motion and a second then. Please vote. That motion passes unanimously. The next thing, the next thing on our agenda will be um, D1, it's our fiscal year 2011-12 first quarter financial report. And with that, Dale, are you going to stand up there? I see you sitting there. Mr. Nielsen will be. Thank you. There we go. Presenting that. There we go. Okay. Good evening, Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is Dale Nielsen. I'm the finance manager and city treasurer here at the City of Vista. Tonight, before you, I am presenting the fiscal year. 2011-12 first quarter financial report that is for the three months ended September 30th 2011 at this point in time general fund revenues and expenditures are within budgetary expectations exhibit three of the report provides budgetary and actual revenue information for the general fund as of September 30th uh, you will notice that as of September 30th, the general fund has received about 16.3% of its total budgeted revenues or resources. Um, first three months of any given fiscal year is typically a little light on the revenue side. That's because there's a number of large revenue sur uh, sources that the general fund receives that are later on in the fiscal year, such as property taxes, where we receive a large payment in December and April. Uh, our motor vehicle in, in lieu property tax compensation and our sales tax triple flip revenues are two large items where we get paid half of that in January and half in May. And our San Diego Gas and Electric, electric uh, franchise fee, which runs about a million dollars. We don't get that till April. So the first quarter always, you know, it doesn't quite track on a 25% uh, quarter basis. Um, a number of revenue items that we also receive in July really 
uh, belong back to June of the previous year. So as part of my year end close out for the audit, I pull those revenues back out and put them into the prior fiscal year. <clears throat> Exhibit five provides similar information for the expenditure side of the general fund operations. Uh, right now, these are about 18.3% spent of the total appropriations allotted for the fiscal year. There are a number of recommended budget adjustment changes at this time. Those are detailed out on Exhibit 2 of my report. Probably the most significant of these right now is a large budget adjustment that is both being done for the city and the city's uh, Community Development Commission due to the state budgetary impacts that we are going to be experiencing here in the next few months. Um, in order for our redevelopment agency to uh, survive, if you will, uh, we are required to make a payment on the state's behalf uh, this upcoming, you know, in, in January and May. Uh, that payment is going to total approximately $5.6 million is our best estimate at this time. The resolutions for these budget adjustments can be found on exhibits 11 and 12 of the staff report. There's also a few recommended personnel changes that are discussed in Exhibit 13, and the amendment to the classification and compensation index is done by resolution on Exhibit 14. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Do you have any questions? Anybody? Then I guess um, I would need a motion to receive and file. Okay, here for Tam Aguilera. Mr. Nielsen, uh, can you uh, address this, I guess this statement that's found on page three of 39, um, where it says that uh, the general fund balance at the June 30th, 2012 will be negative 418,000, solely due to impacts of the redevelopment and reductions. And then it goes on to say that we'll just go ahead and address that next month. Uh, pretty much. Um, we, we started out the uh, budgeted fiscal year uh, with a projected June 30th, 12 fund balance uh, that I believe was around 80 something thousand. I, I don't recall the it's exact a, a number. It's a very small number. Yeah, a, a marginal number. Uh, unfortunately, due to the, the cuts that we need to make to redevelopment, some of those items in redevelopment have direct impact to the general fund because there are funds that do flow from redevelopment to the general fund for certain items, such as citywide overhead. Uh, when the overall op operations of redevelopment are curtailed due to the, the you know, budgetary action of the state, well, the overhead requirement is also reduced. Um, so yes, you are correct. Right now, if we approve all the budget adjustments that, that we're looking at, we do have a projected June of 2012 uh, available fund balance that is a negative number. However, at this point, I'm not too concerned about that because uh, we do have the fourth quarter report for June 30th, 11 coming up. And at this point, I'm fairly confident that there will be funds available left over from 2011 that we will be able to use to bring that back up to a positive number. Okay, um, so basi basically we're at a deficit. Yes. Uh, if, if you look at projections and, and what you have and estimates, but if you were to look at actual cash on hand, absolutely not. And well, so, I figured that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> I have yeah, looked at that. Yeah, yes. so. <laughs> it, yes. It's all, on, it's a, as of September 30th, it's all on paper and it's living inside its own little bubble without taking anything else into consideration. And you feel that that'll be fixed by the next? I'm very confident that we will be able to address that. I need you to come to my house and balance my budget. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm fine. I, I uh, also, Mayor and Council, uh, two of the council members had asked, to, and I uh, meant to pass this out on the dais, is that the um, schedule on Prop L payments that um, we, we look at. And what we're going to do in the future <coughs> is add these to all of our quarterly reports. So you'll see the schedule. Um, 
uh, approximately two years ago, we talked about the years 2017 and 18 is when we would be in a negative in the general fund if we had no growth and we continued on using approximately 1.1 million annually for firefighter salaries. Um, we have amended that in our five-year budget plan, which we will be bringing also to council um, in the next uh, um, meeting or two. We have uh, stopped using, we will stop utilizing the Prop L monies for any of the additional firefighters, so in 2013-14. And so then that extends the life out if with a modest 2% growth and no other changes to 21, 2021 and 22. And, and then that's where we, where we would possibly experience a negative. So we have uh, at least uh, 10 more years and, and that's if there's only a modest growth and no growth at all in the current year. And so we're looking at uh, very conservative projections and we would have uh, 10 years to make sure that we close that gap and there isn't any negative. In uh, 2021 to 2022 is the first year that we would experience a negative number in Prop L if, if we only have a modest 2% growth. Cosmo Bronchi, did you have some questions? A question, Mr. Nielsen. On the bottom of page 5, or 39, it says something about the valuation of building permits yes. has gone up. So are, can we be somewhat optimistic that things might be turning around in the commercial market or no? Well, a as I've worked on these quarterly reports, I always look at our, you know, a report that I get from our building permit system on a quarterly basis, and I'm comparing to that to the quarter of 12 months earlier. And it does look like things are picking up a little bit um, in both, uh, as you probably noticed, sales tax seems to be turning around a bit, although uh, one quarter it does not a trend make. Um, so I, I think that things are starting to look up a little bit, mm -hmm. um, albeit very slowly, but at least it's moving in the right direction at this point, and I just, uh, you know, with everything that's going on over in Europe, though, I mean, everything's very tenuous. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's interesting how the world economies now are much more interwoven than they were, you know, even 10 years ago. And, uh, you know, something happens over there, and we definitely feel the echo of it here. So let's, yeah. we, let's we watch it all continue. carefully. Thank you. I have no more... Um, comments and I need to have a, I don't know if you want to go with staff recommendation, I, there's five different things here that we need a recommendation for, that I need a motion for. I'm going to read them, receive, receive and file the fiscal year 2011-12 first quarter finance report, adopt the city council resolution amending the operating program budget for the 2011-12 fiscal year, adopt community development commission resolution amending the operating program budget for the 2011-12 fiscal year, adopt City Council Resolution amending the Citywide Classification and Compensation Index and wait for the fiscal year 2010-11 fourth quarter financial report is pre oh, wait until it's presented to determine how to address the projected June 30th, 2012 fund balance. So do you want to just, uh, I need a motion for all of those. Okay, we can do it in one. We can do it one in one. I, just, okay, I, I, just I will make a motion to uh, approve uh, all five items. Can I second? I'll go ahead and second that and I will await next month to see I'll your be report. back thank you <laughs> okay I got I have a first a second and a third <laughs> so everyone vote please vote so you that vote <coughs> Councilmember Coles push, push it again Sorry. okay okay thank you you're welcome thank you the next item is D2. Um, it's our city manager employment agreement. The city council directed its subcommittee consisting of um, myself and council member Coles to meet and negotiate an employment agreement with Patrick Johnson to serve as the city manager upon the retirement of the current city manager, Rita Geldert. Um, the subcommittee has successfully concluded its negotiations with Mr. Johnson um, at the time of this meeting and um, his employment agreement will be presented to the city council for any discussion and approval as required by the Ralph Brown Act. So, with that, 
we have any comments or discussion? Councilmember Coles. Well, <clears throat> uh, I was honored to be able to serve on the uh, negotiating committee to sit down with uh, Mr. Johnson to hammer out a contract. Uh, it's, I, I think we all have our heartfelt uh, uh, regrets that we're, we're losing Rita, but uh, good for Rita to be able to move on to other uh, um, things in her, priorities in her life. We are fortunate, and I've come to realize how fortunate we are to have had somebody from within who uh, has been groomed to step in with a lot of the history of our city, uh, a lot of the vision that's been established in the city, and save us literally months and many thousands of dollars in a recruitment effort that uh, might not have yielded uh, as good a product as we've been able to come up with. So. Uh, I want to uh, make a motion to approve this agreement with uh, Patrick Johnson. Okay. Um, next, I have Councilmember Lopez followed by Councilmember Branke. Uh, Mr. Gilder has been here for many, many years and, and has done a great job. And uh, whoever she hired in the past, uh, behind her there has, has always done a great job. And uh, uh, she has definitely picked, uh, as far as with uh, Patrick, uh, a person that really dresses sharp. <laughs> He's gotta be the brush uh, dresser in the county, I believe. And, but uh, uh, apart from that, he's really a person that, that is very conscientious about what he does and is, is always, on top of things, and I think that the city will be would do well by having him, and uh, uh, looking forward to working with him because I think he's got a lot on the ball. He's a young man, and uh, and I think we'll do very well. Thank you, thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Um, That's a second. Okay, <laughs> okay. Councilmember Granke. Well, first I want to thank the subcommittee for taking the time and energy to to put this together and, and, and I think it's a really great contract and I think uh, we should be proud of um, Mr. Johnson. I think he's gonna do a great job for us. I, I do wanna thank Ms. Geltert for, for grooming him because um, I, I've just had the best, uh, best results from Mr. Johnson. Every time that I would have a question or a concern, he was just right on it and get the answer back to me. So I, I look for, to afford to a really good relationship with him. I think he's gonna be really good for our city. So um, congratulations. And I'd be glad to second that. Uh, I think we got, we got a idea. first and a second, and we have a third. Okay, well, uh, then I'll, let's get a fourth. Mayor Pro Tem Aguilera, maybe we get a fourth. <laughs> I can do that. Um, no, I think, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, the mayor and Councilman Coles for uh, putting the work in him, as well as the attorney's office, because I know they put yeah. quite a bit into it. Uh, we're very fortunate to have Patrick. Uh, we've been very fortunate to have Rita. I'm going to miss her. And, uh, but I know that she has prepared Patrick and I'm very confident in Patrick and staff. And uh, I think that uh, she leaves the city in very good hands. Uh, so I will go ahead and fourth. Okay. <laughs> and I'll make a fifth. I, I, I am very much gonna miss Rita. I've worked with her for all the, this is my 13th year that I've been working with her. So I'm gonna very much miss her. And she leaves the city in very good shape. She's been wonderful at, uh, all these years, so I'm very much gonna miss her, but I'm looking forward to working with Patrick. Mr. Johnson back there, the best dressed guy. <laughs> We're so lucky to have him to be able to hire from within. It is, um, he's so competent, and every time I ask him to do something, he always has an answer, and as, um, he'll be in, the city will be in very good hands with him, so I'm, I'm very happy to, to approve the, his contract, and so I think we need a formal vote on that, though, right? Yes, yes. okay, so. Um, okay, please vote. Motion passes. I think you're hired, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> so with that, let's see. Um, and also the. Um, okay, one more thing. One more thing. This is for the students that are out here today. If you go to school, educate yourself, you'll have a job like that young man there. He's 
in his early 40s, and he's a city manager for a city. So continue your education, and the, the whole world opens up to you. Thank you. The next thing, one on our agenda, will be oral communications. Um, any member of the public can address the, us for three minutes um, on any related matters that are not on our agenda. So we have just one public speaker tonight, and that is Chuck Rabel. Uh, good evening again. Uh, good news and bad news. I'll start with the bad news. Uh, we're in the middle of uh, fire season, and when the, those days were real clear about, an, uh, about a, a week ago or so, you could see for miles. And for miles, all I saw were fan palms that needed to be trimmed. They were everywhere. And if we're going to try to sell the city, okay, if one of the main gate, gateways to the city is uh, what used to be uh, Escondido Avenue and the freeway. And here's Palm Trees R Us, or whatever the name of the place is, and it, at least we need to make an example of them and start getting these things trimmed because all it takes is one ember flying and we got fire all over the place. Uh, now for the good news. The good news is the uh, Historical Society is teaming up with the, our neighbors on a project called Historic Route 395. And we're in charge of uh, <clears throat> planting signs from the uh, San Marcos border up through to Main Street and then along East Vista Way until uh, Osborne. Uh, the signs are now available. We're taking orders. The uh, street signs themselves are uh, $75 a piece, and you can dedicate it to somebody. And uh, we we got to have smaller signs to sale, sell for $40 and a real little sign for 20 bucks. And that's coming up. I've got some maps for you, if I could. Does it show the locations where you're going to put them? Does the map show the locations where you're going to put them? The... Uh, the maps identify the sign, the signage in Vista, and whether it's a left turn or right turn or go straight. Okay. Uh, Fallbrook has already uh, put some of these up, and uh, it's a great, great idea to get people downtown and celebrate our past. Any questions, please? Yeah. I was going to Temecula. I was on my way to Temecula. And I've seen some up there in Fallbrook already. Uh -huh. They look very nice. Yes, they do. Thank you much. Good evening. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Abel. Um, the next day, we're going to have some reports and um, remarks from our um, reports from our members of our governing bodies on outside committee meetings. And I think Councilmember Coles is going to give a little report on I call it RISWA, but it's yes, Regional Solid go. Waste yeah. Association. Uh, yes, I. Um, I've been privileged to serve as the city's representative on the regional solid waste uh, um, group this 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 year, and um, I've learned a lot. You know, I thought I was up on recycling and trash collection and what happens, but I've I've learned a, a whole lot more since I've been on the committee, and uh, or on the board. And at at the last meeting, <coughs> we we had a number of presentations that uh, th that I got excited about and. Uh, uh, and, and in fact wanted to be able to come here to uh, ask our council to support a few things and also to present a few opportunities for our city to take advantage of. Uh, first of all, there, there we had a presentation, and I need to find my notes here, um, from the California Product Stewardship Council, and they talk about plans without bans. And, you know, for years we've had all these uh, recycling directives, uh, like, you know, put your, the plastics and the papers in the blue basket and this and that, but there's really uh, nothing, there's no plan to enforce them. So you can throw batteries in there, nobody, there's no way of stopping that from happening. So there are good plans, but there's no enforcement of them. And uh, so we need to work toward uh, making these plans, you know, more uh, usable and, and, and more uh, uh, 
uh, something that people will follow the directives and, and uh, to help keep our environment uh, clean. Um, and to that end, uh, I'm going to suggest that we adopt a resolution similar to some of our other cities uh, that are in the, in the uh, RISWA. Uh, the members of RISWA are Vista, Encinitas, Del Mar, Poway, Solana Beach, Escondido, and National City. And as a group, we're asking our respective city councils to adopt a resolution joining uh, other cities across the state in supporting the Extended Producer Responsibility Program. And it's not a mandate, but rather it, again, encourages people to follow some guidelines. Uh, and uh, under today's program, most of the enforcement or most of the, the um, uh, negative result of, of inappropriate waste management falls onto the city governing boards. I mean, falls in, it's a cost to us, it's a cost to our community and our, and our residents. And so th the effort is to try to work with producers and their producers are getting on board with this to, to try to package products, package uh, uh, toxic uh, materials in such a manner that they will be recycled uh, to the benefit of the consumer. And so this resolution simply encourages the process by which uh, the communities, uh, cities, and producers can sit down together and talk about making a better approach to how uh, we deliver goods to people and then how the, the, the end product uh, is, is, finds an end of life that's uh, uh, beneficial to, to our environment. So. Uh, I would li I, I'm not sure the process, but I would like for us to, uh, uh, to have a resolution in this regard at a future meeting for us to uh, join in with the rest of our RISWA cities in this. Uh, Ms. Gelder? We can bring that back to council before the end of the year. That's okay. a consensus of the council and uh, okay. that make it sure that it's, just an, it's an encouragement for industry to do so. And then uh, th what I should have said prior to that was we have a way to pay for it. Uh, because I would like for us to join some of our fellow cities in uh, uh, contributing to the effort, uh, maybe a $500 donation, because we just received a $33,500 check back from RISWA for our share of, of the tonnage that, that has gone through our city, and it comes back to us for the purpose of extending recycling and waste management education, uh, programs and opportunities to educate our community and uh, uh, so I'm going to suggest that uh, that we uh, uh, put five hundred dollars of this toward this effort of uh, uh, to, to support the resolution that, that I suggested um, the other thing that uh, w was brought to our attention was December 15th this year is a day day without a bag program in our county and it's uh, being held on December, Thursday, December 15th, to encourage and support the use of reusable shopping bags. And at this time, uh, who's gonna bring out our toy? For everybody that stayed, you have a present. And uh, <laughs> compliments of Riswa and Edco. Uh, we have these nice recycle, I mean, sh shopping bags that are reusable. Take them to uh, your favorite retail store, uh, take them on a picnic, take them wherever you want, and then reuse them as much as you want uh, to save on the plastic bags and the other waste products that uh, are used to bring things home. And I really would like to thank Edco for donating 100 bags uh, to our city. Uh, some of them we're passing out tonight. Uh, the others we'll have uh, somewhere in the city hall for the first uh, lucky visitors to come can pick one up and take it home for, for their use. Uh, the last thing, and I just got this at the last minute uh, from RISWA, is helping to promote the uh, pres prescription, National Prescription Drug Take Back Day for October 29th, 2011. And, uh, Venues will be provided throughout the county 
for people to dispose safely of prescription drugs that are no longer needed are outdated or no longer going to be used by people and to keep them out of the sewer systems to keep them out of the hands of people who might use them in a dangerous way but to safely get rid of our prescription drugs and you can see the the ones you don't need anymore the ones you need be sure to take them stay healthy but on the on the board above the screen above you can see information about the places that you can drop off the for the unused prescription drugs and the print kind of small up there but there are locations all around our area that that you can use for that and then I'll go ahead with I had one other comment that I wanted to share as a part of my report and I was privileged last Thursday to participate in the community forum on teen and alcohol drug abuse that was put on by the North Coastal Coalition Prevention Coalition and the Vista Community Clinic and it was there were presenters from the Vista Sheriff's Department from other people in the community who work with teen and alcohol drug problems Kathy was the Kathy Valdez was there representing the city I was on a part of the panel to talk about some of the things issues we deal with the forum was really intended for parents but we had over a hundred students that showed up as well as parents and one one young man in the audience when I came in he said weren't you there the other night so I was pleased that he remembered that I was there and I'm glad that he was there to learn from the evening but they it was a great event held here at St. Anthony's Catholic Church they had food they had entertainment they had all kinds of nice things for the young people but it most of all there were nearly 200 young people and parents that were reached in in that effort so I want to compliment the North Coastal Coalition and the Vista Community Clinic for putting that together and for giving us an opportunity to share so that's that's all I have very good um, I think did uh, Councilman Aguilera want to, or want to make a report or no just yeah. comments yes uh, I have a short report um, I went to I attended the Sandag for a regional planning committee meeting and uh, was pleased to see Vista was actually used as, uh, as, as an example of a city along with a couple other cities here in the county um, that are taking advantage of some of the programs that SDG&E has and uh, City Hall is actually taking advantage of that and throughout the city they've also um, brought to our attention that there are other ways that cities can save and uh, pleased that our staff is jumping on that and looking into different ways to save money uh, I mean one of the programs was as easy as contacting SDG&E they'll flip a switch save us fifty one thousand dollars and they're not huge numbers when you're talking about our general fund but uh, in these days um, that pays for about a third of an ambulance I guess so I think that's a good thing so, and that was about it thank you okay Councilor Lopez did you have a thank report? you sure uh, Edco great company here in Vista has uh, really helped our community a lot and is always there for our community so uh, thank you Edco for for the bags uh, I uh, uh, had the city here actually had some of these made up uh, a year ago and uh, my granddaughter lives up in LA and uh, one day she was she came home with all her books in this little bag that out of cardboard uh, uh, paper and uh, as she was leaving it ripped so I said mm-hmm I got an idea so I mailed one of these to her and uh, about six months later I was uh, uh, at her home, at her, my daughter's home, and when she came home from college, and inside of this were her, all her homework and her books, and and I go, oh, I see you received the the bag because yep, only from Vista. So you know, she even though she goes to college there, she really enjoys Vista as as a student. Uh, coming back now to the, uh, you were talking about uh, uh, Riswell, Dave. 
one of the things is that that uh, I'm really into the the uh, uh, those type of things on trying to preserve our 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 environment. But what I see is that that uh, when you want these students at school can get a computer and or calculator and they can go really go through them really fast okay and they learn but they learn at a young age they're teaching at a young age the same with drugs drugs and alcohol if we have officers at the schools teaching young people about about that they're not there officers are not there as their enemy as a friend and teach them about drugs then at a young age young young kids learn that that it's the wrong thing the same thing with with recycling there should be systems that or classes and there probably is there is that that teachers have special classes during the year to teach kids about recycling and the, the sooner we teach young kids about recycling then the sooner they learn as we get older about recycling it's hard to teach an old man like me about recycling because we were not brought up with it but if you do it from the time when they're young then by the time they get to be our age they're really into the recycling and I think recycling is is a thing of the future and we need to do that to keep our environment clean not like these other countries dumping it all over so thank you for going and keeping us abreast of what's going on thank you so uh, uh, well, one uh, other thing I need to talk about. <laughs> uh, I was listening to the uh, some economists and some people on TV here about San Diego County the other day, and uh, right now uh, people are having difficult times with their their uh, uh, payments of their home and and so on. And and uh, there has been an executive order signed that uh, you can actually work on your refinance your house at a lower interest rate if your interest rate is six six to nine percent uh, talk to your bank talk to whoever you deal with and look at your look at your uh, uh, structure there your, your your payment structure because it can be changed today maybe the price can't be changed but the interest can be changed and that would help the economy and help people who are having difficulties who maybe might not know about it so really look into it because that would help you with your payment thank you so not relieve any of the debt you're just refinancing the, the amount that you owe just but what the you interest owe. rates will be lower yes yeah okay thank you so uh, coming back i um councilman coles do you have anything else that you wanted to say you did it all okay mayor pro tem aguilera any other remarks no i just uh i did attend the uh, job fair uh did interactions there it was here at city hall and it was uh a nice event it was nice to see that uh, well there was a lot of people there it's unfortunate I guess to see that many people but it was nice to see as many employers that did show up uh, that had real jobs I mean I saw some some serious companies there that uh, had you know not I mean we had all, all kinds from hourly jobs to high salary jobs that were being offered so it was, it was nice to see Thanks. I think they had almost I think it's 700 people had a lot of people yeah about 700 out. people Councilman Lebronke, nothing? I'll go to this end down here. To our esteemed attorney, Daryl Piper. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd just uh, like to extend my congratulations to the city manager designate. Look forward to working with him. How about our city manager, Rita Geldert? I, I do have news, and unfortunately, I, I so apologize. I always wish I had good news. <laughs> I have updates from the, from the league. The vehicle license fee, let me give you a really quick uh, update. The league filed a lawsuit against the state to challenge the last minute and got an amend bill where it diverted $130 million in DLFL fund, DLF funds from cities in connection with the state budget. Um, and so the, that late night raid was done to finance certain public safety grant programs uh, to cities, counties, special districts, but it was an indirect violation of Prop 22 and other parts of the state constitution. Um, these grants were previously funded from the 0.15% DLF rate that expired on June 30th, 2011 and wasn't extended. And so for the city of Vista, this is another $361,000 hit to the general fund. 
so we'll keep you updated on that litigation the annual conference resolutions they had four primary resolutions so one was supporting alternative methods of meeting public notice requirements which is a charter city we've already addressed raising public awareness about the imminent health and safety concerns of bullied children third one was calling for improved transparency in and public access to the proceedings of the california legislature specifically the gut and amend legislation to prevent that in the future the fourth was calling upon the governor and legislature to fully fund and constitution protect realignment funds uh, related to corrections and those were assigned as ab 109 and 117 again which happened in late september early october and that's the prisoner release program the redevelopment update our extortion payment for vista we were successful in petitioning the state and reducing our extortion payment in order uh, based on our redevelopment operating fund balance from 6.3 million to 5.6 million wahoo we don't have to lose as much in future years the payment would be reduced from approximately one and a half million to approximately 1.3 million the statewide litigation you may have seen that it's to begin uh, hearing oral arguments before the California Supreme Court on November 10th 2011 at 9 a.m. and in keeping with the committed timeline the California Supreme Court intends to issue a determination on this lawsuit prior to the payment dates of January 2012 of again which we have already taken action which you've seen in the first quarter a budget report we've taken action to prepare for that payment we haven't we're not waiting until January to see if the other shoe drops um, pension form reform is the last item I'll mention um, the league board of directors adopted a strategic goal for 2011 related to sustainable and secure public pension systems it's been on um, everybody's minds for several years now but to further this goal the city manager's department uh, drafted an action plan to address the unsustainable pension costs that deliver threaten to deliver the uh, basic public services and propose a long-term fiscal challenge to the state itself this plan was spearheaded by the city manager um, group in San Diego County so we have been started this three years ago the action plan details the following actions that agencies can take at the collective bargaining table and this is again adopted by the league uh, board of directors the first is to have employees pay the employees share of first costs um, this is something that the Vista did many years ago already Pro second is provide a two-tier retirement system with new hires being placed in a reduced benefit tier third is allow employees to pick up a portion of employee ERS PERS cost up to PERS limits through negotiations to better share the normal cost of, of uh, pensions and then the fourth is the uh, base final retirement salary on the three highest years work instead of um, one single highest year uh, part pardon me there's five the fifth was to eliminate the PERS contract option of including employer paid member contribution that's the EMP uh, EPMC in the calculation of the base retirement which spikes salaries so they endorsed this action plan in July we'll continue to update you on those and that is all thank you that's a lot okay I guess if there's nothing else for the good of the order we will be adjourned until when when's our next meeting November uh, we have it November 8th is our next meeting. So thank you all for coming. Thank <laughs> you.